I've seen Gecko right here. Look at the size of this thing! Massive! Huge! The green-eyed giant forest gecko! Oh. I'm Jack Randall. Oh, bum! See that? That was crazy cool. I'm finding every animal on the planet. Whoa. I'm in the wild. I think it's down here. Oh, Up close and personal. And a massive snake! Okay, there's a scorpion on my arm. This is just remarkable. Look at that. Reticulated python in the water. Come on, let's go. Every single place that we come to, get to understand the habitats in the area. Each recce mission, there's a new set of animals. I can't wait to get out and explore and see what we can find. Often the best things come as surprises, and this episode is all about two jewels of rainforest. These vines coming down. It's really strong, amazingly strong. Tarzan style. Oh, this is perfect here. It's a little ridge that comes down. There might be some birds coming in and out, and that'd be a perfect place to sit and wait. Check this out. Look at that. Wow. Ooh, okay, if you come around here, Hagen's Pit Viper. A new species for me. But look at the size of this one. Very, very big. No, oh, wow, look at that tail going. This is a grumpy one. That tail is almost like a rattlesnake and just moving it around, trying to make the noise of that tail against the branches to say, go away, go away. Certainly, if I got much closer than this, I'd be in, in absolute strike range and be in danger of actually getting bitten by this snake. Look at this, that pit over there. Whoa! Did you see that? Oh man, scary, scary. Just struck straight out. That is the first time I've seen a pit viper strike at me at head height in the branch. Normally they're so calm. And like all of the other pit vipers, quite venomous and it has a particular venom that actually attacks your tissue. Might end up getting bitten and getting necrosis around the bite site. Might have to amputate a finger or even an arm. Okay, the snake is on the move up this tree. We have to get a branch so we can get some good close-up shots. Oh, don't go all the way up. Okay, come down here. I'm going to use my snake hook and my branch here. They're going to come out. Oh, I guess this is the right time to talk about the fact that there's so many different pit viper species here in Asia. And there's so many similar characteristics. What's similar is that they've got heat seeking pits on the end of their nose that allows them to sense warm blooded prey. Also, they're extremely well camouflaged. They're ambush predators. And the ones that live in the trees, they have to be green. That's why they look very, very similar. But it's the little tiny differences that make them different species. So this one is slightly different than the Waggler's Pit Viper. It's slightly different to the Siamese Peninsula Pit Viper. And it's those differences that mean they don't interbreed with each other. And they'll be occupying a slightly different habitat type. So if you move this pit viper in a different structure of rainforest, it wouldn't be able to survive as well and that population would die out. So it's really quite specific where you find different species. There's all these different little habitats all around Asia. Why we have huge diversity of pit vipers around Asia and actually all around the world. And this is a new one for my list. The Hagen's Pit Viper. Yes. In a normal episode, the Hagen's Pit Viper is charismatic enough to be the headline animal. But what comes next I think deserves to take the mantle. It has a crazy cool appearance and a mega feisty attitude. Is 
think I've seen gecko right here. Big gecko, really big. Yeah, it's a gecko. Massive gecko up here. Got him, woo, look at that. Wow, that is a massive, huge gecko. Look at the size of this thing. Wait, I'm just coming down. Oh, he's got me. Oh, oh he's got me right on the end of that knuckle. Woo! Okay, not caused any bleeding. It is humongous, really grumpy. And like all geckos, I have to be really careful not to hold it by the tail because they drop their tail to get escape from a predator. But look at those eyes, absolutely remarkable. Green-eyed, giant forest gecko. They are just so cool. It looks prehistoric, actually, like a dinosaur. Really amazing, look at that mouth it gave. The remarkable thing about this gecko, really sticky feet. They are called lamellae, and that allows them to stick onto the surface. They can almost pretty much cling upside down and be able to stick up like a like Spider-Man, like sticky pads. Look, I'm pulling down, and this gecko still is managing to grip on to my thumb. Really quite amazing adaptation for sticking onto branches. Really amazing. Whoa! Oh, he's got me again, you cheeky monkey! <laughs> they are really cheeky, these geckos. Another animal has managed to get me whilst I've got it. At this point, I'm letting you go. You can let go. Okay, well, anyway, look at the patterning. Got these spots, quite bluish spots and green. Actually, it's quite amazing. Just look about the environment. Always look at an animal and look at their coloration and how they might be adapted to that environment. And this, oh, there they go. It's quite mossy, there's a lot of moss all around the trees here, I've noticed. And if you just look at the surface, it has the coloration of moss, kind of mossled, greeny, browny coloration. The look at the size of this really is a giant. It's quite amazing. You go around this rainforest, you start to realize there are some animals that have evolved to be giant size. There's a reticulated python, the longest snake in the world. There's the king cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world. And you've got these. Oh, yeah, really quite strong. You've also got these, the green-eyed giant forest gecko. Probably one of the biggest geckos in the world. I'm going to release you back into the wild, mate. It's okay. Off you go. I'm going to put this one back into the wild. Let go, you can go back home. Okay, you're going back on your log. There you go. The giant gecko. Yes. Happy hunting.